So let me just make the bases because we have to calculate the areas of triangles as you can see half into base into height. Now I will measure the length of the base, I will measure the height. So when I do that for x, I get area, I, I use my ruler to, the, to, to do that, so I get 4.5 centimeters square. When I do that for y, I get areas 5.25 centimeters square. So the percentage composition of x will be equal to 4.5 over 4.5 plus 5.25 and we multiply this by 100 so we get around 46.2 percent you can round this off to 46 percent it won't really matter and for component y we would we do 5.25 over 4.5 plus 5.25 again uh, 5.25 so multiplied by 100 we get 53.8 percent and when you add these two you get 100 which means obviously you have to get 100 because uh, the, so the, the solute consisted of only x and y nothing else we can only see x and y so the percentage composition of x we've calculated it to be 46.2 percent the percentage composition of y we've calculated it to be 53.8 percent or you can say 46% and 54% same thing so now let's move forward uh, the diagram shows the result of two-way paper chromatography okay so we have used solvent 1 and we have then used solvent 2 how many spots were there after the first solvent had been used so when we used solvent 1 we got this spot we got this spot we got this spot and we got this spot so as you can see uh, so ignore solvent 2 for a while you can see that when we use solvent 1 this spot and this this spot went to the same length this spot and this spot went the same length this spot and this spot went the same length and this spot went a completely different length so you can say that this was one spot this was another spot this was the third spot and this was the fourth spot and we are not counting both of them here and both of them here and both of them here because uh, at that time solvent 2 wasn't used only one solvent which was solvent 1 was used so both of these were overlapping so the number of spots that we saw them as was 1 because they were overlapping so there were 4 spots circle the spot that moved very little in solvent 2 but moved a greater distance in solvent 1 okay so if you see let me erase all the all of this they say that we have to circle the spot that moved very little in solvent 2 and moved uh, moved a greater distance in solvent 1 so it will be this spot because if you see it has moved in solvent 1 but it has not moved in solvent 2 at all it has not moved from the reference so it will be this spot that I've circled over here and then the third part asks draw a square around the spot that could be separated from the rest by using only solvent 1 so uh, they said that um, solvent 2 was not necessary for it they are saying that it was separated from the rest by using only solvent 1 and that will be this spot because if you see these two were overlapped with solvent 1 so we had to use solvent 2 these two were overlapped with solvent 1 so we had to use solvent 2 these two were overlapped with solvent 1 so we had to use solvent 2 and uh, this one was uh, alone it uh, did not have and it was not overlapped with anything else so we only needed solvent 1 to move this one so now we have done um, this question as well let's move to the next one this is the last question um, so an aldehyde uh, let's just make everything as we keep talking about it an aldehyde is CH3 CHO for example an alkane CH3 CH3 and a carboxylic acid CH3 CO2H let's keep the number of carbon atoms same so that for comparison sake so let's just not look at anything else 
let's look at the polarities first. So this will be most polar, two oxygen atoms.